you come from SoCal, don't you? Well, Spain, it's cross between Spain and Southern California. Um, and Karina and Johnny have become really good friends of us. Of us. And uh, Karina has just got a real heart for Jesus. And what I love about, I'm just going to brag on you, but um, what I love about Karina is she is, there is an intentionality and like a real, like, if you've ever had a conversation with Karina, it's like this, you don't get away from like talking about the thing. Um, it's like, we're going to talk about the thing. Um, and she's like, but there's a the passion there. And I love that thing about the passion and the life of God in your life. Really prophetic. And if you've been in a worship set on a Wednesday morning, these guys sometimes lead a worship set in the mornings. It's just beautiful. Um, Karina carries the heart of God um, and a real sense of intimacy with God. And uh, it's just, just, you just get pulled into that space. Um, each one of us has different different giftings and that you'll have different gifting. So can I pray for you? Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Come on up. Father, I just thank you for uh, Karina as she as she speaks and as she talks from her heart. I pray that it would be super fluid, that she can not hold back and we just receive you as just yourself. Um, just be you. Um, and Father, I just thank you for God for the gift that she is and the message that she has, that our hearts would be really open Teach me. Teach us. Oh, oh, man. So sweet of you. <laughs> so, I want to preface this by saying if I cry, it's the Lord. Um, I, I come from a culture of, like, really emotional. Like, Spaniards are just, like, passionate about everything. Um, and Americans are as well. But one thing I realized that when God encountered me for the first time, I just wept and wept and wept and wept. And I didn't know what was happening to me. Um, and this came after a season of like not crying for many years. Um, I've, I've encountered God in the suffering and I've encountered him in the mountains of my life. And I've realized that Jesus wept and he loves human emotion. He validates every single human emotion. And so I want to challenge you if you feel moved today to just close your eyes and open up your hands because that's Holy Spirit. Um, I'm not... I'm not going to try and get anything out of you, but if God is actually tugging on your heart, I want you to actually focus on that, even before what I'm saying, because if there's anything that I want you to take away from today, um, it's how to hear his voice um, and how to stop for him, because how many times he's tugging on us and he's saying like, hey, will you, will you spend time with me? Will you listen to me? Will you, will you, will you get to know me? And, and what I'm learning in this season is that I want to actually learn to stop and think and process and spend time with him even before um, before I speak to anyone else, before I wake up in the mornings. I, I'm trying to say, thank you, like, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Jesus. I love you, too, because he first loved us. And so I wanted to preface that because <laughs> I probably will cry. <laughs> uh, before I start, if everyone can just like close their eyes and like open up their hands, I just want to pray. Again, thank you, Holy Spirit, because you're here. Breath of God, come. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come. We welcome your presence. Just as you were moving in worship, God, I pray that you continue to move now and even after we leave. I pray that we will learn to take you with us, to take you home with us, to wake up with you, to go to bed with you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, God. I pray that the words that you've given me, that the wisdom and the knowledge that you've given me, even just a glimpse of who you are, God, I pray that people can take that, and that they can run with that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that we get to, we get to meet on Sundays. Thank you that we, we get to come to church, we get to choose you. feel Holy Spirit, I start to feel like tingling in my hands. For others, it can be like just heat. You start feeling heat come up your back. Um, sometimes like nerves will twitch. I've learned that that's Holy Spirit as well. <laughs> so just throughout the message, I want you to just like focus on him. So I have the privilege of 
closing Colossians. Um, I sadly wasn't able to make it last week. We were sick. Um, but Colossians is a good book. I don't know if you guys have read it before. Um, but basically, the overview of Colossians is it's written in a time of confusion. This was the time where Jesus had just left the earth. Um, there was a lot of, we had just, um, Holy Spirit had just been sent to us. And this is a time where there's the Greeks, the Romans, they have their own gods. They have, you know, the sun and the moon and all these different things. And, and along with that, you have the Jews that are, um, that are studying the, the scriptures, the Torah. And so in all that confusion, there's Christianity. Um, and Paul gave his life to preach the message of Jesus and what I love about Paul is that he was the person that he spoke truth and love hand in hand. Um, and he was the one that he wasn't afraid to talk about truth and love. And so what I love about Colossians is that he, he speaks about, he writes this letter to the church of Colossae, a church that he's never actually been to. Um, but he says, he says it so beautifully and so eloquently. Um, and so he preaches truth. A truth that says, no, I don't want you to look at the Roman gods. I don't want you to look at the Greek gods. I don't want you to even look at like the Torah. I want you to actually focus on the truth, focus on Jesus and his life. Um, and so what I love about that is that that was like, I, I mean, he was in prison for that. <laughs> and yet what I love is that he didn't ask God um, to, to deliver him from that. He asked God to open up, even in prison, to open up doors for ministry, um, which I think is, I think that's the most beautiful part of this verse, of this chapter. Um, but anyways, I'm going to summarize a little bit of Colossians in case you guys weren't here last week or the past few weeks. Um, so basically, he talks about Christ in us is the hope of glory. Jesus triumphed over culture, and Jesus fulfilled every single law. Um, so he goes back and he starts talking about the law um, and what does that look like. And he starts talking about how uh, when Jesus came in, it became a new covenant with him. So we don't fall under the old law. Um, so back in the Old Testament, we saw that the priests were the only ones that were able to enter into the Holy of Holies. Um, so back then, for every single sin that you committed, you had to sacrifice a pure and spotless lamb. And so Paul is talking about a new covenant where you don't have to live in shame anymore. You actually get to walk hand in hand with the new Christ, which I think is so beautiful. Um, Jesus created a new humanity. When Jesus came into the picture, everything else was like, the Old Testament is like, that's the goodness of God, but in the New Testament, like, we get to walk hand in hand yeah. with God. We get so, to yeah. co-create with God. So in the Old Testament, there was this divide of, like, us and God. And we're, we're striving to one day enter into the holy place. And in the New Testament, we're talking about, no, we've actually arrived. Like, we're not just, we're not just hanging on to eternity in perspective, but we've actually already arrived because Jesus called us worthy when he died for us on the cross. And so um, I wanted to preface that so that you guys kind of know the times that this is written in. Um, and so, yeah, if you could go to the next slide. <coughs> so I'm going to mainly talk about uh, Colossians 4, 2 through 6. Um, but the beginning part, this top part, um, I'm going to read it from there. So if you guys have your Bibles, I'd love it if you guys can open up and read with me because this is the word, the living truth of God. And uh, what I'm learning in this season of life is whenever I have a question about something, whenever I don't know something, um, or I just need reassurance, I'm trying to go to this because this is God's breath. This is where we begin. If you don't know how to find God, if you don't know how to spend time with him, go here. This is, this is like the thing that you need to wake up and just crave every morning because this is where you hear his words. Like this is, um, I don't know if you guys have ever opened up to a verse and all of a sudden God just like speaks to you. Like the words that are coming, 
the words that you're reading, it's just like, oh my gosh, this is me, this is who I am. Um, so that's called the Rima, Word of God. It's, it's, it's like in the now. This is when you like begin to like feel his breath through this. So I'm going to read it. Um, Colossians 4, verse 4. Pray that I would unfold and reveal fully this mystery, for that is my delightful assignment. Walk in the wisdom of God as you live before the unbelievers, and make it your duty to make him known. Sorry, I started on verse 4. <laughs> I'm going to read verse 2. Be faithful to pray as intercessors who are fully alert and giving thanks to God. And please pray to me, pray for me, that God will open a door of opportunity for us to preach the revelation of the mystery of Christ, for, su for whose sake I am imprisoned. <coughs> so I don't know about you guys, but if I was in prison, if I was Paul right now, I would not be praying for God to open up a door for ministry. <laughs> I would be praying for God to take me out of that. Um, and so when I was reading this verse, it really, it really struck me because I thought, wow, what does that say about his heart? Can you imagine, like, you're living in that time of day, and you're, you're in prison, you're being probably tortured, um, and instead of asking for God to take that away from you, to take that pain, to take that suffering, mm. you're actually asking God to open up a door of ministry. <laughs> and so my title of this the title of this message is, What Does Your Yes Look Like? Because we see what Paul's yes looked like. Just in case you need to oh, off. Thank you so much. Uh, we see what Paul's yes looked like. We see throughout the Bible um, what, what all these heroes, what their yeses look like. And, so, and now we get to study from it, but can you imagine living in a time where we didn't even have this? You know, all we had was the Torah, and like we, we had like little bits of scripture, but we didn't have the whole thing. Um, <coughs> and so what I want to talk about is, um, what does your yes look like? So throughout this message, I want you to actually ask yourself, what does my yes to the Lord look like? Uh. So we need to stop praying for immunity of pain, and we need to start praying for faith and vision to overcome it. A couple of months ago, I was driving, and in L.A., there's a lot of traffic, you know, and so I started just spending time with the Lord. I was in a really hard job, um, and I started waking up at 4 in the morning and spending an hour with the Lord before I had to get ready for work at 5. Um, and I remember just praying on my way to work, and I started asking the Lord, God, what is prayer? Why do we pray? I know that it's a really big part of who we are. It's a really big part of Christianity, but, but why do we pray? Like, are we supposed to pray so that nothing bad happens to us? Or what, what is that? And so I heard God say, you don't pray for immunity from pain. Because that's, that's inevitable. Unfortunately, we live in a fallen world. There's always going to be something that the enemy is trying to cook up. <laughs> But we pray for the faith and the vision to overcome it. And so what I realized is that in everything, no matter what you're going through right now, um, all we see is half the coin. We don't see the whole thing. And so we need to start praying for God to give us the vision and the faith to actually walk through that and say, you know what, I'm not afraid anymore. So come at me, because I'm going to pray, I'm going to spend time with the Lord, and I'm going to overcome this thing, dang it, because the enemy wants me to fall. <laughs> but you know what? God's given us the power and the authority to walk through it. And so the thing that you struggle with the most, that's the thing that you were created to have the most victory in. Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know that the, the shame and the insecurity... And, and the lust and whatever it is that you're going through, that was the very thing that God created you to have victory. And the enemy knows that. The enemy knows, did you know that the enemy knows your identity before you do? Did you know that he knows what you were created for? And that's why he attacks you with all that. So I was created to have this, you know, we were all created to have this powerful life, to have this victory hand in hand. We're not just created for the ordinary. We weren't just created to go to work, to get up, to have, you know, kids one day and then die. No, we were created to actually, to be mothers, to be fathers, to, to rise up and to walk through the trenches with the Lord, hand in hand. 
And so, and maybe, maybe one day one of us will do something great, and maybe one day one of us will go home and I actually want to honor the moms. <laughs> the moms are heroes. I'm not a mom yet, but I know that a lot of these moms will probably never get the victory. Um, well, they'll never get the, the credit that they deserve. But those are the ones that are on their knees time and time again, praying for their sons, praying for their daughters. And, so, and that's what it's about. <laughs> it's not about writing your name in a book one day. It's about actually saying, you know what, God? I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go serve my neighbor. I'm going to go love on my pastor. I'm going to go love on whoever it is that's really hard. And I'm going to do that because I know that one day I'll stand face to face. And if all I ever did was love that person well, then that was worth it. (laughs) So um, when I was praying on what to share this morning... Um, God reminded me of something that I walked through a couple of years ago. Um, I was in a really bad car accident about four years ago. I was in two, actually. And I had just moved away from Bethel. Um, I had done one year there. And I had this thing in my mind where I was like, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. And I just had this like vision of like, yes, Lord, I'm going to run hand in hand with you. Um, and like the first month, I was living in L.A. I got into one car accident. One month later, another car accident. Um, I was working at Starbucks, of all places, if you know. Um, L.A., people love their coffee, and uh, it, was, it was terrible. It was, like, it was a really hard season. Um, but anyways, this car accident, it was really, really bad. Um, my leg should have been completely shattered. Um, I had a Mini Cooper and it was completely smashed in. Someone like T-boned me. And, and I just, that led me on a journey of like months, just like pain, suffering, disappointment. Um, because I was 22 years old at the time and doctors were saying you're never gonna be normal again. Like you're never probably gonna walk again good. You're never gonna live with no pain. Like you're probably never gonna go surfing again. You won't be, like there was just a list of things that I couldn't do. Um, and so when you're hearing this as a 22 year old that is like just done a ministry school and like given, you know, like there was just this like big thing in me where I was like, I'm just going to like go love on everyone and change the world. And, and when this happened, I was like, what? This can't be God's best for me. Right. (laughs) And so this led me on a season of like, what does God's goodness look like? Um, and so for months, I couldn't get out of bed. I was just in like constant pain all the time. I was taking, um, they'd given me like hard pain meds to take, um, but I have a high pain tolerance. And so I would just wait until I literally couldn't take it anymore. And I would take something. Um, and so in that season, I just started, I started to really find God in my pain and my suffering. Um, and and the thing about it is that a lot of people would tell me like you can't stay there, <laughs> don't stay there. Like God is good, right? And and I just felt like no one understood me because I wanted I wanted someone to sit in that pain with me. I didn't want someone to just say like shake it all off, you're fine. People have gone through worse, right? <laughs> and so <clears throat> in this season, I remember just being caught between disappointment and like wanting to go after the Lord, but I was still, like, really hurt. And so I got invited to go to Egypt for the first time on a mission trip while all this was happening, and I remember almost declining it, saying, like, what do I have have to offer right now? I have nothing to give. I, I've been in bed for months. Like, I lost my job, all these different things. I was living at home, and, uh, and I just remember thinking, like, I have nothing to give those people. Like, if anything, someone that's, someone that's doing something good with their life right now, like, they should be going. And so I, I heard God say, will you say yes to me in this? And so I went. Um, and, and I didn't get put on the worship team. I didn't, I didn't get to do anything like that. Um, for those of you that know, like, I love worship. That's what I was made for. Um, and God's teaching me in this season that I'm not just um, supposed to release through worship, like, I have actually a message, and like 
people need to hear what I have to say, not just when I'm singing it. <laughs> and so, <coughs> anyways, I get to go to Egypt, um, and my pastor, the pastor of the trip, she ends up saying, okay, so I want you to do a breakout session uh, in a conference on finding your voice. And I remember looking at her and saying, okay, I think I can do that. And I just remember going home and saying, like, I can't do this. Like I have, like I have nothing to give. Like I don't even, I don't know what to share. Like I'm gonna sit there and like all these women are gonna like come up to me for prayer, and yet I don't even know if I believe in God's goodness right now. <laughs> and so, sure enough, like uh, this room was filled with like hundreds of women, and they all come to hear me speak because they, when they hear groups from America come, they're like hungry, they flock like sheep, they're like, pray for me they're like, literally, they'll be like pray for me, and I just remember being like, I can't, I can't handle this um, so they came to watch me speak, and the first day God said, I don't want you to open your mouth, I want you to let everyone else minister, and I want you to sit down, and so um, I could feel the disappointment in the room when I said, actually, I'm not speaking today I'm going to sit here, but everyone else is going to, like, share. Um, and by the way, I think great leaders are the ones that let others lead. Um, just side note, I love that, like, Doug does that. I love that this house does that um, because I think that's amazing. When you want to see other people succeed even before you, that's when God says, okay, I want you to. Um, but anyways, I the next day, half... Half of the woman showed up from the, like, the first day. And God said, I wanted only the hungry to receive what you have to share. And so um, I got up there and I start sharing about this testimony. Um, but right before I shared, I heard God say, I'm going to move, but you're not going to get healed today. And so can you imagine the disappointment of like, oh, one more day of like dealing with this pain. <laughs> but anyways, I share my testimony. And just God, just like, I saw the man in white walk into the room. I saw just like, I'm a seer, so I see things. But I literally saw like the hem of his garment just touch people. And wherever it would touch people, they would just like fall out. Like no one was praying for them. Um, and like women got delivered from like years of like pain and trauma. And, and can you imagine like living in that kind of culture and saying like, you don't have a voice. Like, men have voices, but you don't. What you have to say, like, you can't say that. And so I saw Jesus come in as the champion, as a lover, and as a friend. And I saw him just touch all these people in the room. Um, and, and at the end of my testimony, um, I saw all these women line up to, like, have me pray for them. And I was there for hours just praying for people. And, and so many people got healed from car accident pain, from trauma, from... From, you know, a lot of women that were just angry. They were angry because they'd been told their whole lives that they couldn't be what they, what they really thought that God wanted them to be. Um, and I saw God just deliver, like do all these crazy things. Um, and I went home that night and I was in pain. And, and I had to learn how to find God in my suffering. And so I heard God say, I'm going to take you on a journey of healing. I'm not going to actually heal you like that. Because he can do it in a second, but I really feel that sometimes when he does something like that, we don't actually honor the process that we're in. And so sometimes he actually wants you to walk through it with him so that you can honor and find him in that. And so, surely enough, two years later, I'm still dealing with pain. Um, and so I went back for a second year of Bethel, and I'm... I'm somehow got on the worship team and I'm leading a set in the middle of COVID. There's no one in the room except for pastors in the very back. And I'm just like, I'm still dealing with this pain. Like, I'm telling you, like, I've been prayed for hundreds of times. Like, pastors, students, like, everyone's like, today's the day, today's the day. But you know what? Like, I never lost faith. I also want to say that, like, all it takes is a mustard seed of faith and that'll move a mountain. Like, I always had 1% of faith. And I said, you know what, God, if today's the day you want to heal me, then so be it. And every, I've learned that every time someone offers prayer, I always say yes. Because nothing bad can come from prayer, right? <laughs> and so um, I'm sitting in this worship set, and it was just like, it was all worship. It was like three or four hours. 
Um, and I'm like, I'm crouched on the ground, like in pain. Like I'm just like, I started like, it would come from my back and I like would get migraines and like I couldn't move my neck or my back and it was just like a lot of pain. Um, but I remember just like being sat on the floor and I heard just a whisper and I heard him say, your time is coming like for healing, not that he was going to like kill me or anything, but it was like, your time is coming. Um, and so I remember um, just being so excited because I thought, oh my gosh, like this long process, like God has something in store and it's just around the corner. Um, and so surely enough, like probably a few weeks later after that, I remember just being in a worship set. I hadn't really sung yet. And all of a sudden I noticed that like for the first time in three years I was I wasn't in any pain at all like that was the first time that I didn't have pain and like no one prayed for me that day no one like no one surrounded me and said you know what today's the day no I literally like all of a sudden I just realized that 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 loud pain that was that I'd been carrying for like years it was just completely gone and so I remember just being like Wow, isn't that the kindness of God? That it happens when you least expect it. And so sometimes he gives you little like little cookies, little like um, little prophetic words to like keep you on track, right? So in my darkest times, I that's when it's been it's gone silent. I haven't heard from the Lord, but every once in a while when I want to give up, I hear just a little bit of his heart for me. And that keeps me on track. And so the reason why I'm sharing this testimony with you is that, you know, Paul had it worse than I did. And and you're probably going through something that's worse than what I went through. Or maybe it's not. But you know what? It doesn't matter about comparison. There's no comparison in the kingdom of heaven. No suffering is bigger than the other. But what I do want to say is that Paul was suffering, and he asked for God to open doors for ministry in the middle of that. And so what I want to say is, if I knew then what I know now, is that God's goodness has no end. His goodness is just the beginning of where he wants to take you. And so I want to challenge you guys that no matter what you're going through right now, and maybe your life is great, and that's fine, but what I want to say is that no matter what you're going through right now, God has not already, um, he's already won that victory that you're going through. Like, he's not surprised by any pain or trauma or disappointment or suffering. Nothing that you go through can actually surprise him because he's already gone through it before you did. And so the one thing that I held on to when I was going through that was that I knew that I wasn't alone. Because that's so like God. He crouches down in the dirt and he lays with you and he says, you know what? What you're going through is validated. And I'm going to cry with you. And I'm going to sit with here. I'm going to sit with you here, no matter how long it takes. But what I do want to say is, your heart posture has everything to do with how far you come, and your heart posture has everything to do with how um, with how fast you walk through this season. And so, what I know now is that if I would have if I would have found God's goodness and found thankfulness in the season that I was walking through earlier then I probably might have gotten healed earlier. But I just had to sit there and, like, I'm a little stubborn sometimes. And God was like, you know what? If it's going to take you, like, three years, then I won't, like, I'm going to sit here with you and you're not going to be alone. And you know what? Every single human emotion, I'm going to validate that. And I'm going to say that no matter what you're going through, like, I understand and I cry and I sympathize with you. <coughs> so... You know, in 1 Corinthians 13, 9, it says, Now we see in part, but one day we will see face to face. We don't know how long we have left. Um, and if anything, there's, we, live in a, we live in a time and place where there's a lot of noise happening. There's a lot of um, division, even in the church, in the world. Different people do it differently. Um, we live in a time and place where... Uh, we live in a time and a place where there's just a lot of noise. And just like uh, Paul is talking in this, in this book of Colossians, 
Um, I really think we need to walk hand in hand, love and truth. And if we don't know about something, we need to find it in the truth. Find it in here. <laughs> and so what I want to share today, um, ending, is Paul lived with eternity in sight. I think if he was living with himself in sight, I think he would have prayed for God to deliver him, for God to take away his pain, to take away his suffering. But Paul didn't care about losing his life. Because he knew that that was the beginning. And so, my challenge to you is, what does your yes look like to the Lord? There's no small, there's no too small or too big of a yes. And it can be, I challenge you to ask him every day, God, what does my yes look like today? And that can look like helping your neighbor, sending a text to someone saying, hey, I'm praying for you today, and you actually pray for that. <laughs> Do I have to actually pray for them as well? Yeah. Aww. You know, my yes to the Lord in this season is, I've just moved to the UK from the US, and for many months, like I, I gave up a career, I gave up my job, I gave up my family. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but also for the call. I felt the Lord. Wow. You know, when you say yes to him, it doesn't make sense. And that's how you know it's God. I want to read the last. Um, two verses walk in the wisdom of God as you live before the unbelievers and make it your duty to make him known let every word you speak be drenched with grace and tempered with truth and clarity now more than ever we have to actually know God we have to know him because how many times I mean living in LA like that's a pretty dark place but Every time people would, I was working on a show a couple of months ago, and every time people would find out that I was a Christian, they would just like attack me with words like, oh, you're a Christian, so what do you think about this, and what do you think about that? And it was just like, oh my gosh, I felt like modern day persecution is like mm. through words. <clears throat> At the moment. But you know what? I realized that I had to spend more time with God than anything else working in a job like that because I needed his wisdom I needed his understanding and I, I would come up with these things where I would just like you know a lot of times when people like corner you um, really they're just hurt and they want to be feel, like they want to be seen and so I would I would see them and I would love on them and to this day there's I can't tell you how many people um, have messaged me saying, you know what, like, I used to hate Christians until oh. I met you, and you're the one person that, they were like, I just don't understand you, it doesn't make sense, you give so much love and you mean it, <laughs> and so now more than ever, we really need to study this, we need to spend time with him, we get to, we have to know him, um, we need to pray for wisdom. We need to pray for understanding. In 1 Kings 4.29, it says, God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight and breadth of understanding as measureless as the sand on the seashore. Now more than ever, we have to pray for that. If we don't have an answer to something, good thing he does. <laughs> One day, we will stand face to face with eternity. Don't wait till that moment to give him your yes. <laughs> Don't wait till Jesus comes back to say, okay, God, I give you my yes, okay. No. Don't wait for that. Because I guarantee you that this week, God's going to already have, like, so many yeses for you to say. And what I love is that in everything, he waits for you to choose it. He doesn't force you to do it. <clears throat> and so if you guys can just close your eyes and open your hands, I'm going to pray.
Jesus, I pray that you reveal what our yes looks like. God, I pray that if there's anything that people can take away from this message today, is how to find you, God. God, I pray that we, we learn to hear your voice in the middle of a crowded room. God, I pray that you teach us how to find you. Teach us how to seek you, God. God, I pray that you will stir in us a hunger for your word, a hunger for your voice, Jesus. God, I pray that we don't get distracted throughout the week by other things. Take away all distractions, God, if we could just have you. Because you're why we're here. It's all about you, God. Thank you, Jesus, that we get to actually pursue you like you first pursued us. So I pray that you give us the vision and the faith to walk through the fire and to not get burned, to be, but to be branded by your goodness, God. Let us be branded by your goodness. <laughs>